G'day everybody, Matt Dorn from Lawn Porn. This episode is about spraying broadleaf weeds with bow and arrow herbicide. Let's get your lawn on. This video is about getting rid of broadleaf weeds. If you're getting something from these videos, be sure to like them, comment and subscribe. It helps me grow. So it's late autumn and that's when the broadleaf weeds will start coming out in areas that aren't doing so well, like shaded areas. And though the lawn is in fairly good condition, it will come out in certain little spots if you're not too careful about it. In the backyard with the tiff tuft, there's quite a few there because the renovation hasn't quite covered in. Now it's very important that you don't let your pets step on the wet treatments for at least six hours. And poor little Tom, he's not really gonna like that, but he's just gonna have to deal with it. And look, I'll take off all the toys and everything that he munches on. Now make sure you use a suitable selective herbicide for your lawn type. I use bow and arrow on my Tiff Tough Cooch and my Santa Ana Cooch. Half fill your tank with water, then you put in your uh, chemical and it's 50 mils per 100 square meters for bow and arrow herbicide. Once I put that in, I use a little trick of washing the little cup with a little bit of water to get the residue, and then I put the rest of all, <laughs> then I put the rest of my water in and mix it up or give it a big shake. Is how I mix it all in. Now, if you're using a backpack spray, here's a little tip for you. Uh, just get it on a raised area so you're not bending down so far to get it on your back. It still is a little bit awkward but it makes it a fair bit easier. If you look at the pattern that I'm spraying in here, I'm trying to spray very evenly and I'm sort of snaking around so that I'm never actually walking on the chemical itself. So that's why I'm going forwards in one direction and backwards in the other, trying not to overlap my application that much. and. Yeah, um, the whole plan of it is that uh, when I finish, I will be able to just step out of the area without having to step on the wet treatment at all. And then I go to my next area or wherever I'm going or whatever I've got to do next. considerations you need to make before using a selective post-emergent herbicide. And why it's called selective is because it selects certain weeds or certain plants it's targeting. And why it's post-emergent is because it's after the weed has emerged. So it's post the weed emerging. Well, one thing you really do need to check that it is suitable for your grass type. That means you can spray it on, it'll affect the weeds and not affect the grass. Buffalo varieties, you'll have to be very careful about that because your grass is broadleaf in nature. So I'll have a link in the description with a couple of options that you can go for and good luck with that. You also need to consider watering. You do not water generally after these applications and it's best not to water just before the application. Generally with these products, you shouldn't mow at least three or four days before you use the product and don't mow three or four days after using the product. Read the label and check the recommendations per the product. But the reason is that you don't want to promote growth in the weed. Mowing it might promote it to grow some more. You've also got to consider wind. If the wind is above 20 kilometers per hour, it is going to be too windy for the application to be effective. Simply the wind will make the application not as even as it should be. The other thing too, as you've seen, in the video is you'll need to wear some protective clothing. Long sleeve top, some gloves, some glasses, long sleeve bottoms, covered shoes. And that clothing, well, you don't really wanna be bringing that clothing inside, so try and have some special spray clothing that you keep in a box or something in your garage is a very useful thing to do. So one of the things that you will notice with bow and arrow herbicide is that it takes a while to get working. If you make an application three or four days, you might not notice anything and then it will start working and it works quite slowly. The whole idea of it is that the slower death is the more complete death. So don't worry about that one. If after a couple of weeks you don't see any change, then just do a reapplication and you should be right. So the big takeaways from the whole video is make sure that your herbicide is suitable for your grass type 
Make sure you don't water before or after, or if it's gonna rain soon after your application, don't apply. And don't mow for a few days before or after, and just give a chance for the product to work. So May, last month of autumn, it's all pretty interesting. Must say, the lawn is starting to really slow up now, and it really does come to that time of you've got to look after the bad guys rather than looking after the grass so much. So the bad guys will, uh, like, like weeds, will start growing uh, while the lawn stops growing. So you just got to make sure that they don't get much of a chance to get going and start taking over your lawn. So doing, getting the bad guys is, is the real warm season grass thing to do in late autumn and winter. And uh, then spring's not too far away and it all gets happening again and yeah, starts growing and it's all good fun. I have seasonal programs and if you follow my programs at the moment, you'll notice that the fertilizer treatments start becoming a little bit less because the plant doesn't need that much. And still got to keep fertilizer during dormancy simply because it will accept it that little bit and it just makes spring that much better. So this lawn of mine, look, I haven't mowed it now in a couple of weeks, I think thereabouts, and I'll probably, uh, I'll probably give it a little bit longer before the next cut. And uh, yeah, my main thing at the moment is still getting the rabbits, but uh, uh, they seem to be staying away. I'm still waiting on my other orbit sprinkler. It's uh, gonna be a little while before I get another one, so, uh, but one seems to be doing the job at the moment. And look, I don't run it every night. Um, I didn't run it for the last three. Still got a few rabbits uh, munching a little bit, uh, but yeah, once, once I've finished my little uh, stint up at Coober uh in about a week and a half or so, I'll be back and uh, I'll be able to really get on top of it then and, and uh, get it sorted. But look, everything's headed the right way with the program. And yeah, you can find that program at uh, lawnpointonline.com. It's a free download and it reads really well on your mobile phone. So you can just grab your mobile phone and download it whenever you like. Yeah, for this month uh, alone, there's been over 100,000, uh, sorry, for this season alone, there's been over 100,000 downloads of the program. And the winter one will come out at the start of winter. You know, 100,000 is quite a, quite a figure at the moment because uh, the last two months of my YouTube I've just gone over 100,000 views so last month was my biggest uh, month on YouTube uh, thanks to uh, US views and uh, thank you very much for the uh, follow and uh, and it's just <laughs> it's just amazing isn't it you know just getting uh, 100,000 views in a single month on YouTube it's just nuts so it shows you how big the uh, audience really is and you know people are getting into their gardening and getting into lawns especially during covid situations they're finding uh, that they're getting into the lawn stuff more than the going away stuff and uh, yeah it works really well for the nice nice uh, family lawn that's for sure okay my next video is going to be about the garden grove lawn pawn top dress it is out it's happening it's great and it will be fantastic for growing season. So that'll be in my next video. Literally, I'm gonna be uh, going inside this house here, editing this video, and then boom, tomorrow, Garden Grove, shooting the next one. So look, like these videos, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. You'll get notified when I drop the next video. And that's gonna be a corker. They're all noisy over there, They're all noisy. But you have to be noisy to Make a house. <laughs>